Today I'm going to show you how to make a combination lock here in Rec Room. Now this is a two part series. Part one, we're going to show you more of the circuitry and the logic behind how the combination locks work with just a three number combination lock. In the next video, we'll expand that from three numbers all the way to five numbers as a solution, but we'll use all nine single digit numbers to kind of get that one in the second video. Let's go ahead and get started with this one. Now. All right, so the first thing you want to do is pick out your solution number. Now, today I wanted to use 420 as my solution number, but when you add zeros into the combination system, at least the one that I'm using, it makes things a little bit more complicated. So we're not going to use that number. Instead, we're going to use 421 because that doesn't have any zeros in it. So you're going to want to go ahead and get your buttons ready. Let's just go ahead and go to dynamic and get three buttons here today. Three. And we'll go ahead and configure it with their appropriate numbers. All right, so now what you want to do is get these buttons actually outputting the number that's assigned to them. If we hit wire, we can see that when I hit this, they're all going to output ones. It doesn't matter what we label them as, they're going to output ones. So what we're going to do is use a comparer chip so that they actually output the number that they're assigned to. And let's hook up the red pin here to the red pin up here. And we're going to switch it to does not equal mode. So basically what we're saying is, does the number coming out of here not equal the number that's assigned here? Right now it's a zero. And since it is a zero, it does equal that. And it will be outputting a zero here and a one there. But if you can see, whenever I hit this button, it'll flip really quickly. So what we want to happen is we want this chip to output this actual number. So we're gonna, well, it's already, we've already configured it, just to reiterate, you're gonna configure it. We're gonna hit advanced mode, and then we're gonna configure this blue pin right here to whatever number is on the button. So let's do four for this one. And now you can see, whenever I hit this button, it's gonna output a four. And we're just gonna copy this same thing, except for we're gonna do it for these buttons, and of course, we're gonna change the blue pin to whatever corresponding number it is. All right, so we have this set up here, and as you can see, when I hit this button, it outputs a two, it outputs a one. It would anyway, technically, for this, but we're just gonna do that just to, to, to reiterate everything that we're doing here. So now we kind of need a way for the circuits to say, hey, buttons are being pressed, signals are being sent, right? So we're gonna use a combinator chip to do that, okay? And we're just gonna hook up all three of these, the red pins, to the corresponding, or not the corresponding, we're gonna hit, hook up all the red pins to all of these different pins. Just one going into each one, since we only have three numbers. All right, so we have red pins for each of these comparers hooked up to their own individual inputs on this compare chip. Now this will temporarily store whatever number is being pushed, but really we're using it to activate the the system the circuitry later on to kind of keep track of what numbers being pushed and in what order they're being pushed so our next kind of set of chips here is going to be used to keep track of how many times a button is pushed this combination that we're working on is only going to have three numbers in the solution so really after the button is hit after a button rather is hit three times we kind of just need it to reset if it's wrong right so we need a system to keep track of how many times a button has been pushed. So what we're gonna do is hit a, uh, do a compare chip here, and we're gonna put this, we're gonna wire this red one up to here. And what this is gonna do is basically say, we're gonna do the same thing as, as these. If it does not equal zero, we want it to, to send out a signal. So again, put it in does not equal mode. And then we're gonna do another combinator chip. Actually, I'm just gonna clone here. There. Okay, and then we're going to hook up the red one here to the red one there. But we're also going to hook up this red output back onto itself so that it keeps track. So basically what's going to happen is you'll see I'll hit the button. It'll go in. It, it, it'll say, oh, this, this number over here that's coming out is not zero. So we need to put a one in here. This will then 
say, oh, I'm one, and it'll keep saying one plus zero equals one, one plus zero equals one. It'll just keep repeating that process until another button is, is hit, and then it will send another non-zero number to here, which will then say, oh, let's add one in just for a second, and then it will be two, and it will say, okay, well, for that second, now it's two, and then it will say, oh, now two plus zero equals nothing, two, two plus zero equals two. And it'll just keep repeating that process. Let me just let me just illustrate. Let me just show you. Just <laughs> I feel like it'd be easier that way. So if I look at that and I push this button one time, it's a one, two times, it's a two. Let's go to another one just to show. If I hit this one, that's the third time, it's a three. And it'll keep going as long as I hit these buttons. That's four, five. So it'll just keep going. But the issue here, again, like I said, it's only a three number combination that we're working on. So if the button is hit more than three times, we, we need it to reset. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take another compare here and we're gonna go, we're gonna configure it to greater than or equal to. So if this number, which is how many times we've hit the button, is greater than or equal to four, because again, if it's one past three, also there could be some glitchiness where it goes up way past, you know, somebody could hit it multiple times or something. Basically, if it's over four, we want it to reset the numbers. We want it to reset the system. So let's configure this to four. And then we're gonna hook up the red pin here because right now the number is five, so it's over four. So it's sending out a one up here on the if. But we want it to reset this counter. So right now this is back to zero and you can see it's putting a zero there. So if I hit this again, keep going, keep going, keep going. And then as soon as it hits four, as soon as it hits four, there we go. It flips to one, resets, that resets. And so that's how that works. So this system kind of keeps track of how many times a button is pushed and if it goes over the amount that it needs for the combination, it'll just reset it. Okay, so this next section might get a little bit confusing, but bear with me, it'll make sense in the end, okay? So our number today is 421, right? What numbers would we need to add together to make this number? Well, the simplest way with, with three button pushes would be to add 400 to 20 to one. So that's what we need to do. We need to have a system that whenever you hit the first button, first button push is multiplied by 100. And if that button happened to be four, then it would go to 400. And then we need your second button push to be multiplied by 10, so that if it did happen to be two, can't, I can't do that, but you see what I'm doing. If it happened to be two, then it would go to 20. And then one's a little bit of a special case, but we'll still do it just to just so that it works with all numbers, essentially. Uh, if the third button needs to be multiplied by one, so that then it can be added to that. Okay, so that's what we're going to end up doing with the chips. So we're going to need some more compare chips. We're going to use three of them this time. Let's just, let's just go to three. So the first one is essentially asking how many times, but all of these three are asking how many times has have these buttons been hit? This one right here is gonna say, hey, has it been hit one time? Has it been hit two times? Has it been hit three times? So let's hook that up to this since this is the counter for how many times the button has been hit. So we're gonna hook all three of these up to here and we're gonna configure their numbers. Configure that to one, configure this to two, configure this to three. Okay, and again, what I said earlier is that if those, if this was the first time that it was hit, right, if it was the first time, it needs to be multiplied by 100. So, we're going to put this in advanced mode, put all of them in advanced mode, but we're going to put it in advanced mode, and we're going to change the output for if, if it is equal to 1, we're going to change the output to 100, since that's the number it needs to be multiplied by. So, let's just go 100. Ooh on that one okay the second one remember if it's the second time the button is pushed it needs to be 10 so let's put it in advanced mode and change that number to 10 Oop, well i'm already here <laughs> i was gonna hit input but i'm already here all right and then this this last one we could technically just leave alone but i'm gonna you know just to reinforce what we're doing do advanced mode 
change this to a one again if it's the third one it needs to be multiplied by one so there's that all right so now we have that these numbers need to be that the blue numbers need to be multiplied by the numbers that are being output right so let's go ahead and make a combinator well i've already got it selected but let's make a combinator right but we're going to change it to multiplication okay and we're going to hook up the red pin of that to the output here that basically stores whichever number is currently being pressed, right? You remember this one? And it also activates the, the keep track of what and what number is hit system. Okay, and then we're gonna hook up the green one to the output. Now actually what we're gonna need for these three, because we have three possible things that could be output, we don't just wanna take the one. So what we're gonna actually do is get a another combinator, but it's just gonna be a plus. I'm going to add all of these together in a similar way that we did this one where we kind of have it temporarily stored, but almost like sending a signal. That's what we're going to do. So let's just add all three of these together. There we go. Okay. And then we're going to hook that up to the green. So now when I hit these buttons over here, let's say, you know, I hit the four, it's going to go through. It's going to say, oh, that was the first time that you hit a button. We need to multiply that number by 100. Okay, and then it will send it through and it will multiply it. Now, again, we're in a situation here where it's not storing them. So if I do hit this button, let's just hit a 1 and just show you. It's multiplied by 100, but it doesn't save it. So now we need it to save the number. Let's add another combinator here. The way we saved it, just like over here where we saved the count for the, the number of times the button was hit, we're going to wire this output here and we're going to loop it back on itself. So now this is actually storing the number and I'm actually going to go ahead and get a sign out because we are going to need a sign later just to kind of show it. And let's configure it so that it shows what number is coming out of this, this addition chip here. We're going to configure this and change message zero, which is the current message selected. If you put in a squiggly bracket, and then R for red, since we're going to hook it up to the red one, and then close squiggly. It'll display whatever number I input to the red pin. You can also do it for green and blue if you just switch it to G and B. But let's put that there. So right now we have a zero coming through here. If I hit any of these, it'll it's the first time I've hit it, so it'll be multiplied by 100. Let's do that there, and it's 400. And again, we can test it, as I said earlier. You know, you hit the two, it's the second number, so it needs to be multiplied by 10. There we go. And then one, there we go. So we have it working, but now we don't have the system to say, hey, you got the right answer, right? Also, when it when we get to that, that fifth one, we have one more reset we need to hook up. Because you remember, when this hits four, it resets this. But we also need it to reset this total number. So we're going to hook that up to the reset right here. We want the number to be canceled once we hit. So let's hit it a fourth time. There we go, and it gets canceled. And then make sure that gets canceled. Okay, so the last bit here is how to get it to basically say, hey, you got the right number, right? So we're gonna do another compare chip right here. And this one, we're gonna hook up to this total. And then we're gonna configure this number to whatever your winning number is, the 421. So let's do 421. There we go. So what will happen is whenever this number is 421, it will then change this to a 1, and this is your signal to kind of activate whatever it is you're wanting to activate, to open a door, to turn on a beacon. Let's actually bring a beacon out just so we can illustrate that. So we have a beacon here, and we're going to hook up the on-off to this. And also, just to illustrate further, there's one more trick you can do. Since it's going to be a 1, we can hook this up to it, and we can change what message 1 is for this. So let's just say, <clears throat> you win for the winning message, right? So now, when I type in the wrong number, nothing will happen. Let's do 2, 1, 4, right? Nothing. Beacon off. No extra message. Fourth number resets. Now, 4, 2... And do this. I can look one beacon turns on you win 
Everything's good, right? Everything is working. All right, everyone. Well, that's it for part one of how to make a combination lock here in Rec Room. Next time, we'll expand it into a five-number combination lock, and we'll also have more than three buttons. I think we'll have nine buttons in total. Yeah, because we won't use zero. I also want to recommend, if you need more of like a hands-on approach to learning this stuff, make a brand new room and use the escape room kit as your template. Okay, they have a three number combination lock in there that's the exact same thing that I just showed you. It, it does use a little bit of older circuitry just because it was before you could configure the actual chips themselves, but it's the exact same thing and you can, you can get a hands-on approach to it. And if you did learn something, if it helped you, make sure to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Have a good day, everybody. RCO Man, out.